Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern. And this week we're taking a look at Treasure Control in Standard, which is a blue, black and green or Sultai colored tap out control deck, which means you won't see a ton of counter spells in this deck, instead we have more sorceries and planeswalkers, but our main win condition in the deck is a card called Revel in Riches, which is a 5 mana enchantment that says whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we get to make a treasure token, which is an artifact that we can sacrifice to make 1 mana of any color, and at the beginning of our upkeep if we control 10 or more treasure tokens we win the game. So that's the main win condition in the deck, of course we have a lot of other cards in the deck that make those treasure tokens so that we can get to 10 treasures a lot faster. We also have mechanized production, which we can use to also make more treasure tokens since this can enchant an artifact we control and at the beginning of our upkeep we get to make a token that's a copy of the enchanted artifact and then if we control 8 or more artifacts with that same name we win the game so we can just put this on a treasure token, get to 8 treasures and win the game that way. So those are the main win conditions in the deck, now let's take a look at all the other cards in the deck. We've got one copy of Pacification Array, which is one of the many artifacts in the deck, since we do have a pretty big artifact sub-theme because of all the treasure tokens. So we can pay 2 mana, tap the array to tap target artifact or creature, so we can use this as a repeatable removal spell to answer the opponent's biggest creature, and also works nicely with our own sweeper effects, since we can sweep the board and then still have the array left over to answer the opponent's follow-up. We also have Fatal Push as a nice efficient removal spell, it's also pretty trivial to enable Revolt in this deck by sacrificing a treasure token. Next up we've got 4 copies of Treasure Map, which is another important piece in the deck as it can generate some treasures and also generate some card advantage. So this is a 2 mana artifact, we can pay a mana and tap it to scry 1 and put a landmark counter on Treasure Map. Then if there are 3 or more landmark counters on Treasure Map we get to transform it into Treasure Cove and we also get 3 treasure tokens and Treasure Cove is a land that can be tapped to make colorless mana, but we can also tap it, sacrifice the treasure and draw a card. So in some circumstances where we might not have the Revel and Riches or Mechanized Production, we can just use this to draw more cards and find us our win conditions. Next up we've got Search for Ascanta, another transform card from Ixalan and another way to generate card advantage. So this is a 2 mana legendary enchantment that says at the beginning of our upkeep we get to take a look at the top card, if we don't like it we get to put it into our graveyard, and then if there are 7 or more cards in our graveyard we get to transform it into a land named Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, which we can tap along with 3 mana to take a look at the top 4 cards, reveal a non-creature non-land card from it and put it into our hand, and as you'll notice we don't have any creatures in this deck, so every non-land card that we find we can put into our hand, so Search for Ascanta is a nice way to get some more card advantage going. Next up we have 3 copies of Inspiring Statuary, which is a pretty strange card. So this is an artifact that says non-artifact spells you cast have Improvise. So as we're casting a non-artifact spell we can tap any number of artifacts we control to reduce the generic mana cost of the card we're casting. So imagine we're casting a Revel in Riches, we can tap 4 artifacts we control and then 1 black mana to cast the Revel in Riches. So this works very well with all our treasure tokens since we don't have to actually sacrifice those treasure tokens to generate mana off of them and we can just save them to win the game with a Revel in Riches or Mechanized Production instead. Then we have 3 copies of Bontu's Last Reckoning as our sweeper of choice, 3 mana to destroy all creatures is a very powerful effect, but it does come with a drawback in that lands we control don't untap during our next untap step, although this is slightly reduced by the fact that we have cards like Inspiring Statuary along with all our treasure tokens to generate mana, so it's not like not being able to untap is the end of the world in this deck. Then we have the full 4 copies of Pirate's Prize, which is a 4 mana sorcery that draws 2 cards and also makes a treasure token, so can get things started for mechanized production. And it's also pretty easy to cast once we have an Inspiring Statuary in play, since we just need to tap 3 artifacts and pay 1 blue mana. Then 2 copies of Mechanized Production, which most of the time will be enchanting one of our treasure tokens, but there are circumstances in which we might want to enchant one of our other artifacts instead. We also have 2 copies of Vraska's Contempt, a nice 4 mana instant that exiles target creature or planeswalker and we gain 2 life, so a nice answer to the indestructible gods and the many planeswalkers in standard. 
Then we have three copies of Tezzeret the Schemer in this deck, which kind of seems out of place since he doesn't actually make treasure tokens, but instead he makes Ethereum cells, which are essentially the same as treasure tokens, they just have a different name. But Tezzeret is still very powerful in this deck since the Ethereum cells still synergize with a lot of our cards. The minus two can kill creatures that are otherwise problematic, like Hazoret for example, since the ability gives a creature plus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts we control, so this gets around indestructible creatures. And then the minus seven can also be a nice alternate win condition if we don't find our Revel in Riches or Mechanize Production. Then we have two copies of Spell Swindle, which is a 5 mana instant that counters target spell. We also get to make X treasure tokens, where X is the converted mana cost of the countered spell. So this is a nice way to get up to 10 treasures for Revel in Riches or 8 treasures for Mechanized Production. Then of course two copies of Revel in Riches, which works very well with all our removal spells in the deck. The only one it doesn't work well with is Vraska's Contempt, since that one exiles, so we won't actually get a treasure token from exiling a creature with Vraska's Contempt, but it works very well with our sweepers. And then finally, two copies of Vraska Relic Seeker, which is the reason why we're splashing green, a very powerful planeswalker, which comes into play with 6 loyalty, which is a lot, and then can even protect herself with her plus 2 ability, making a 2-2 pirate creature token with menace. Then the minus 3 also synergizes very nicely in this deck, since it can destroy any artifact, creature or enchantment, and we also get to make a treasure token. And then the minus 10 ability can also win us the game, as we'll have some pirate tokens in play that can finish off the opponent. Then the mana base is pretty simple, we've got four fast lands here, two copies of Blooming Marsh and two Botanical Sanctum. They're not great in a control deck since they'll enter the battlefield tapped late in the game, but I think they're still necessary so we can cast our Vraska reliably. We've got four Drowned Catacomb, four Evolving Wilds that can get all three colors, then four copies of Fetid Pools, which counts as both an island and a swamp for Drowned Catacomb, and we can also cycle it for two mana. And then our basics, we've got one forest, four islands and five swamps. Then taking a quick look at the sideboard, we've got two copies of Negate for the control matchups. We've got two copies of Azir of Many Faces, which is great against all the green mid-range decks. We've got three copies of Duress, which is also great against combo and control decks. Then we've got one Bloodfast, which is another great way to draw some more cards in matchups where your life total is not under any pressure. We've got two copies of Battle at the Bridge, which is another nice improvised card that can come in against the aggressive decks, another nice answer to cards like Hazoret, since this gets around the indestructibility and can also gain us a bunch of life. Two copies of Appetite of the Unnatural, which we can also pick up thanks to our green splash to answer any problematic enchantments from token decks, for example. And then three copies of Contraband Kingpin, which is also excellent against any aggressive decks, as a nice 1-4 lifelinker that lets us scry one whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, which of course also includes treasure tokens. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't have any black mana, but I think it's still a keep, given that we have Search for Us content treasure map to help us find the lands we need. A renegade map from the opponent, so could be a lot of things. And we find a Tazeret, so let's just play a land, say go. Blue black, so it could be an improvised deck. And I think we're just gonna run out search for Ascanta first. Could get countered, does not. So we're just looking for more lands here opponent with a start from start to finish. So it looks like a token deck. Which if we can find our Last Reckoning should be an okay matchup. And there is the Last Reckoning but I think we have to put it into our graveyard here since we really need to find lands. Alright there's a swamp so now we can run out treasure map and start scrying. Could also decide to fatal push one of the tokens. There's a sacred cat. I think we'll take two for now though. And end of turn scry. Spell swindle to the bottom. Search for Ascanta finds a fetid pools which does enter the battlefield tapped, which is kind of an issue here. 
So I think we actually put that in a graveyard despite it being a land. And then we can scry with our treasure map. But even if we find a land, we would not be able to cast Pirate Surprise. But if we put Fetid Pools to the graveyard, then we might as well just risk it here. And take our draw step, find a Statuary, which isn't actually the end of the world since that still ramps us, kind of. So we can play that. And say go. And we're just gonna need to try and set up a situation where we can play Ravel and Riches and then cast a Bontus Last Reckoning, sweeping away all the opponent's tokens, making a whole bunch of treasure tokens. And there's the Scarab God from the opponent, which we can answer with Vraska's Contempt if we can find a second black source. Drowned Catacomb is not going to the graveyard. It's a great draw here. So let's Vraska's Contempt and then keep up one mana to scry with our treasure map. Opponent hits us for three. Opponent hasn't found any of their powerful enchantments yet. As we just seen, Anointer Priest. What they need is a hidden stockpile or an anointed procession. So let's just scry with our map. Another Pirate's Prize. I think, let's see. We could just cast a bunch of Pirate's Prizes next turn, but I think we need to find more land still. So let's bottom that. Search for Ascanta. Vraska Relic Seeker is powerful, as it can answer the opponent's enchantments. But it's kind of bad against all these tokens right now. So I actually think we do put it in the graveyard still. And do we want to scry with the treasure map? I think we do, as we'll get a bunch of treasures and then can use those to cast our spells. Evolving Wilds can go to the bottom, I think. It's a land, but it's not a great one. Take our draw step, find a Blooming Marsh. Alright, so let's cast the Pirate's Prize. Tapping our treasure. Draw two, find some more cards. Alright, so we could play out Tazeret, but that would just be taking out a token, so that's not great. Can't run out the Reveling Riches yet, so I think we're just gonna end up fatal pushing one of the opponent's creatures instead. Could also Tazeret and plus. Then the opponent's probably gonna kill our Tazeret, so kind of wanna find our sweeper fact here. Opponent gets in with everyone. We'll fatal push one of the tokens that they can't embalm. Just to take some heat off of our life total. Also gets us closer to transforming Ascanta, which is not irrelevant. And Pirate's Prize, I don't think we want to put in the graveyard, even though that way we don't get to transform Ascanta. Could have also upkeep cast a fatal push just to transform Ascanta. But uh, this is fine. Just draw the Pirate's Prize, cast it using our treasures. Alright, so now we can run out our Revel in Riches. Let's play a Sanctum here, I think. Then we can still cycle the Fetid Pools and draw a card with Treasure Cove. Right, a main deck Bloodfast from the opponent. That's gonna draw them a whole bunch of cards here. So that's pretty good. I think we just let this happen. Opponent's gonna draw. It's gonna draw again. Alright, let's start by cycling. Another Fetid Pools, Sack of Treasure, draw a card. There's a mechanized production. Another pirate surprise. I don't think we want to put in the graveyard. And we will transform Ascanta. Let's go ahead and draw. So we could pirate surprise first, or we could activate our Ascanta first. Ascanta digs us a little deeper towards Last Reckoning. So maybe we want to do that. Since, let's see, if we pirate surprise, 
I guess we still have enough mana to do both, so let's just cast the Pirate's Prize first. Draw two, find Tezzeret, some more productions. Let's see, what happens if we just put two mechanized productions on our treasures? Then we would go up to five, six, seven, and then Fatal Push to kill and make another one with the Reveling Riches should be enough to win the game, but our opponent could draw a cast out to deal with our productions. All right, let's go with the production plan here. So let's enchant one of our treasures. Enchant another one of our treasures. And say go. Field of Ruin can blow up one of our lands. Opponent's gonna use it on Ascanta, that's fine. We'll get a basic. Opponent keeps drawing. Opponent goes to combat. And I think we start by cycling Fetid Pools. In case we find a second Fatal Push. Alright, let's just cast one on the... Warrior, get a treasure from our Revel and Riches, and we should be able to win on upkeep, as our opponent keeps drawing with the Bloodfast. Go to upkeep, Mechanize Production does its thing, and there we go, alright sweet. Managed to beat tokens despite not drawing our last reckoning. Onto sideboarding, where definitely want the appetites to deal with the opponent's enchantments, even though they only found a blood fast that game. Uh, the kingpin can kind of stabilize our life total a little bit by providing a nice blocker. Fatal push is pretty poor. Uh, Pacification array doesn't do much. The rest is great. Deseret's not great but we might have worse cards. I think we need to keep the Contempt to answer the Scarab God, so I guess we can take out the Zezerets. Vraska's not great, but does answer the enchantments. A Negate could be an option to counter the opponent's enchantments, but it's kind of reactive and we're gonna tap out most of the time. Opponent's also gonna bring in a bunch of Duresses. Bloodfast should be decent, so I guess we can probably shave something like a kingpin and only bring in two since we still do have the reckonings so yeah this should be fine maybe we don't need our duresses and we should be playing the gates instead but i do like duress in a tap out deck like this one and this looks like a fine hand we have the kingpin to be a nice blocker and then pirate surprise to find some more action Let's lead with the Fetid Pools, say go. Bloodfast turn 2, that's gonna be problematic. Let's go ahead and run out the Kingpin. And there's a stockpile. So now our opponent can start making some tokens, although they don't have one to start out yet. So let's go ahead and attack for one. This also makes our opponent's blood fast a little worse. And then second main, I think we're just gonna play out Evolving Wilds and get a forest. And say go. And I don't think we want to cycle the Fetid Pools. Although, I guess with all these pirate prizes, we can make sure that we keep hitting land drops. So maybe it's fine to cycle the feathered pools. But I'm just gonna draw some cards. Run out a Legion's Landing. Alright, I guess we do cycle. Find a production. And there's Appetite, so we could kill the opponent's enchantments. The question is which one, as they're all pretty powerful. But I think it's a bit more mana efficient to cast the Pirate's Prize here. Opponent might also have redundant copies of the Bloodfast in hand, so then killing it would not accomplish a whole lot. 
So we get to scry with our kingpin. Statuary seems pretty good here. And we'll say go. Don't want to attack with our lifelinker when the opponent has their own lifelinker. Opponent's gonna attack for one. They will get to trigger their stockpile here, but I think we do block. Despite them getting the extra token. Could be a second stockpile. Yep, so they get two tokens now. But that's fine. It's on top. Draw the statuary that we knew about, so now we could run out the statuary and still have enough mana to cast our appetite. I think I like that. So yeah, let's statuary it up. Scry one with Kingpin. Don't need another mechanized production. And then let's appetite right now, killing I think the Bloodfast. Do like taking out a stockpile as well, but the Bloodfast is gonna be pretty good going late. Then we can also fetch up another land here. Probably gonna be an island. And say go. The Ras is gonna see your hand. Don't really mind them taking any particular card. If they take the blood fast, we still have plenty of card draw with our pirate's prizes. They do indeed take the blood fast. Another Legion's Landing. One is gonna sack a servo to enable a revolt. So they won't be attacking here. But next turn they will be able to transform the Legion's Landing. Alright, so let's go ahead and draw. Find another mechanized production. So we can put that on a treasure if we want to, but I think we start with the Pirate's Prize. Draw two and scry one. Duress. I don't think we need a duress right now. We'd rather find the Last Reckoning. And now we can either cast another Pirate's Prize or run out a mechanized production. I think I want to go ahead and cast the production on one of our tokens. To get our wing condition going, run out Evolving Wilds. Get, I guess, another island. And say go. So our opponent will start going pretty wide here. But as long as we can find a Last Reckoning at some point, we should be okay. Legion's Landing transforms into a Danto. We'll block the Vampire here. One is probably just gonna sack it. We take three. Opponent gets a bunch of servos and that's it. All right. Mechanized production gets going. Another duress I think can go on the bottom. And find a Vraska, excellent, so that can take care of one of the stockpiles. And we could then also run out a Kingpin to protect our Vraska. That seems pretty appealing. Opponent might have a negate, but that would be fine. Let's start with running out Vraska. See if this maybe gets countered. It does, that's fine. So I guess instead we could mechanize production another token. Don't hate that. So now we don't really need to run out the other campaign since we might end up casting a Last Reckoning. Opponent gets in with everyone, we'll block one. Opponent's probably gonna sacrifice that one, but it does force our opponent to spend their mana. So we'll take four. Still at 17. And a Champion of Wits is totally fine. Our opponent's also pretty tapped out. They get some more tokens. We get to make some more treasures. Scry with the Kingpin, and there's a Reckoning. Put that on top. 
Scry with the Kingpin again, still keep that on top. And in our main phase we can run out Raveling Riches. And then we can cast the Last Reckoning and make a whole bunch of treasure. And that should probably do it. Put on Sacrifice as a creature to scry one. And put that Swamp on the bottom. So we got to scry one as well, thanks to the Kingpin plus Raveling Riches. Last Reckoning happens, get a whole bunch more treasures. And between the one Reveling Riches and the two Mechanized Productions, our opponent's going to have a hard time dealing with all three enchantments. We're not going to run out the Pirate's Prize since we won't get to untap our lands next turn, just in case. So let's see what the opponent comes up with. It's going to be an Ixalan's Binding. Not bad, but uh, I don't think that's going to be good enough, as our mechanized productions are just going to run away with the game. So I guess not a Reveling Riches win, but another mechanized production win. And Sacred Cats shows up as well. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand unfortunately only has the one land, so we'll go down to six. And this is better. We'll keep and keep a Sanctum on top. Think we'll just play out a Swamp and say go. Next turn we can run out the Search or Treasure Map, probably the Search. That way on turn three we can run out Treasure Map and activate it. So we'll draw Sanctum, we'll play out the Skanta. And say go. Opponent with a Minister of Inquiries turn one, so they're probably some sort of God Pharaoh's gift deck. As we see Seeker's Squire as well. Explores revealing Concealed Courtyard, so the opponent's got a free 1-2. Let's see what we find with the Search for Ascanta. Spell Swindle. Yeah, I think I'll put that in a graveyard, we're pretty far from casting it. Draw Fetid Pools, so... I think we'll just run out Treasure Map and Scry 1. And then next turn we might run out the Statuary. So opponent mills themselves with the Minister, revealing Angel of Invention, Fona and Hostage Taker, so three creatures. So that's very good for them, for their God Pharaoh's Gift. Opponent gets in for one. We'll take it. And Champion of Wits makes an appearance and another angel and Vona discarded and of turn will scry islands can go to the bottom and i don't think we want to upkeep scry here with the treasure map evolving wilds can go to the graveyard we'll just draw for the turn find a blooming marsh so we can play out blooming marsh and then play out the statuary. And say go. Opponent mills themselves once again. So they have the requisite number of creatures in play to go look for a Godfarer's gift with their other artifact. Doesn't look like they found it yet though. So we're just gonna take four. And the hostage taker can steal one of our artifacts here, and it's gonna steal the statuary. So we're probably gonna end up using the last reckoning here. So scry with Ascanta, find a swamp that can go to the graveyard. Uh, we could scry with the treasure map, but there's no real reason to since we know what we're gonna cast here. Find a mechanized production. So let's go ahead and play out the feathered pools, I think. And then run out the Last Reckoning. I guess we'll tap this. And say go. We won't untap our lands next turn. So we do need to keep that in mind. So we see another Seeker Squire. 
reveals the catacomb. And another Seeker Squire reveals Angel of Invention, which your opponent can just cast next turn, which is gonna hit for quite a bunch. Let's see. I don't think we wanna use a treasure map in case we draw a Fatal Push. So search for Ascanta. Reveals Spell Swindle, which we're not gonna be able to cast even with the statuary, so we'll put that in a graveyard. Could have kept it in case we need to counter something like a Godfarrow's Gift or the other artifact from the opponent, but we're gonna need to answer the board first since just a hard cast Angel of Invention is already gonna be a problem. So let's run out Evolving Wilds, fetch before scrying with treasure map, get an island, and then we might as well pass and represent Fatal Push and then end of turn use treasure map to scry one. And there's the gate to the afterlife, which is probably gonna mean we're gonna die here, since our opponent can go get Godfarer's Gift, return Angel of Invention, and that's gonna represent... Let's see, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 damage. So I guess we're not quite dead. Opponent could also maybe return a hostage taker to steal one of our artifacts. Instead they're going with Vona, which I guess can also just destroy one of our permanents. Those get in there, we're down to 8. And we'll probably see a Vona activation on the statuary, that's fine. We'll use the treasure map. Find another treasure map, goes to the bottom. Don't really see how we're still gonna win this game. Vraska Relic Seeker. Well, that can answer Godfarrow's Gift. So, I guess we keep that. But, it's gonna be tricky here since... We're gonna fall pretty low to the Vona and the Seekers. I guess we'll start by running out Frasca. And destroying the gift. Opponent can kill Vraska or just use Vona to kill Vraska. And there's just another gate to the afterlife, which is gonna get another Godfarrow's gift. And that should do it. Let's see what our opponent gets. I'm assuming it's just an Angel of Invention, yep. That's gonna grow the team. And everyone gets in there. Yep, alright. On to sideboarding against Godfarrow's Gift. So, Appetites seem pretty good. Or Bloodfast could be good. Negates should be okay. And the rest is also an option. I don't think we want anything else. Vizier, copying one of the opponent's creatures is pretty powerful, but if they already have Godfarrow's Gift in play, then it's kind of arriving too late. Fatal Push is an answer to the Minister of Inquiries, which is one of their ways to fuel their graveyard, so we might have to keep that in just to answer those pesky creatures early. Tazaret doesn't seem particularly great. Last Reckoning is not great. Can probably shave a copy. And can probably shave a pacification array. Let's bring in the appetites, bring in the negates, and I guess the bloodfast. Don't think we want either races since the opponent's mostly creatures anyways. We would like to be on the play. Unfortunately we have another one lander which we have to mulligan. And yet another one lander but this time we have a negate and a statuary plus a scry. Still seems pretty bad. So unfortunately we'll have to go to 5. This looks a bit better. Keep swamp on top. Opponent kept 6. So it's gonna be an uphill battle. But we should be able to cast both of our win conditions here. So... We might be able to just copy Inspiring Statuary 
and try to win that way. Duress is gonna put a wrench in our plans. He's probably gonna take the statuary here. Yep. And let's see what we draw. Fetid pools, alright, we'll play that. But now we don't have a target for the mechanized production is a problem. There's the minister. Don't have the fatal push to take it out. Another duress. Probably takes the production. Find an appetite. Which is okay, but it's not gonna be cast anytime soon unless your opponent runs out the gate right away. Opponent with a charter course. And they decide to cast it before attacking or... Well, I guess they're just gonna use the minister, so they're not attacking anyways. Put a gift in the graveyard. Untap, find in the gates. So we've got a few reactive cards here to deal with the opponent's gate, but we don't have anything going ourselves. There's a gate, which we're gonna negate. Seeker Squire. But we can always use the Appetite to kill the God's Pharaoh's Gift once the opponent goes to get it with their gate. So that's fine. Opponent gets in for one. Find another Appetite. Alright, so... Let's run out the Revel. And say go. There's the gate, but not enough creatures in the graveyard yet to transform it, so we'll take three here, draw, find a statuary, so I think we make our opponent use the gate here to spend their mana, so we need to make sure to put a stop on the opponent's main phase, so we can kill the Godfarer's Gift should our opponent be able to search one up. So let's see how many creatures are in the opponent's graveyard, they've got one, two, three, four, just four. There's the Hostage Taker, which is gonna steal our Statuary. So in response, we'll cast the Appetite. So a Last Reckoning would not be terrible here. Although we did take a copy out of the deck. Just an Island. So we're running out of gas here, did not find any of our draw spells. Opponent casts our statuary. Gets in for five. So that's a three turn clock. Could always use the appetite on our own statuary just to gain two life. There's a blood fast, which is actually not great in the spot since our opponent has a bunch of random dorks. So we'll just pass and see if we need to use the Appetite or if we want to draw some more cards. Opponent's gonna hit us for 5. And our opponent's gonna Eternalize a Champion of Wits. So that's gonna find them quite a few cards. They discard a Hostage Taker. End of turn, we'll draw some cards since we need to find a Reckoning here as our only out. Bloodfast is gonna transform. Gives us an additional land. Find a Fatal Push, which is not gonna do it here. Alright, so that's unfortunate. We didn't really manage to set up anything meaningful in the second game, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand looks pretty good, so we'll keep. Probably need to go get either an island or a swamp with the Evolving Wilds rather than a forest, just so these come into play untapped. So let's do that. Get a swamp. 
and say go. And then we can just use the treasure to make green mana if we don't find a green land by the time we need to cast Vraska. A tune from the opponent, so it could be a Teamer Energy deck. Instead, a Planes Revealed, so it could be something spicy. Mechanized Production, alright, so we just need to make sure that we hit land number 4, and then we should be okay. Rootbound Crag, so our opponent's perhaps on a Naya Dinosaurs deck. Botanical Sanctum is timely, so next turn we can cast either Tesseret or Pirate Prize. Both ramp us into Vraska, if we can find a land. And there's Ranging Raptor, so Naya Dino is confirmed. So we did find a land, so if we run out Pirate Prize next turn we can run out Vraska. If we run out Tesseret, uh, the minus doesn't do much, so we would be plusing up to 6. Our opponent can attack Tesseret's down to 4. Then we're still pretty far from actually killing the Ranging Raptors. But we would have the additional Planeswalker in play generating mana. Which is pretty appealing, given that we have the Reckoning in play. So we might be able to set up Vraska plus Reckoning. So I think we actually do run out Tesseret here, despite it not doing a whole lot yet. Just gonna plus, make some mana. And say go. If our opponent overextends with a bunch of dinos, we can always uh, cast our sweeper as well. Ether Hub. Opponent with three energy. So what dino could our opponent have here? Something like a Ribjar Raptor. But they're gonna attack Desert first. Nope, no attacks. Interesting. Alright. They're just hanging back. Just running out. A Planeswalker here has got to be pretty powerful. So let's do that. Run out Vraska. And I guess we could just make a pirate as well, rather than minusing and exposing Vraska to a Regis or Alpha. That might be fine. Yeah, sure, let's make a pirate. And make another Ethereum cell. And say go. So what's the worst case scenario? Opponent didn't even have anything end of turn. If they just jam a register alpha here, we can shum the 3-3, three, three, take 2 and then last reckoning. Still seems fine. Instead it's a raging sword tooth. Alright. Deals 1 to everything. So they do get an, a nice and rage trigger on the raptors. So they might be setting up for their legendary dinosaur. So if they attack, we could just trade with the pirate here. But I'm kind of liking keeping the pirates on defense. That way we can minus Vraska on the Swordtooth. And then minus two Tesseret to kill the Ranging Raptors. I guess trading here and then minusing Vrask on the Swordtooth is also fine, since we can Emblem Tesseret. So a lot of options here. Blocking is probably fine though. Even if we give our opponent an additional land, this keeps Vrask at a high loyalty. So a Register Alpha token can't even kill the Vrask. Alright, so we untap. Find another Reckoning. So it's pretty appealing to just Emblem Tazeret and get uh, that going. And then we can Vraska the Swordtooth and be in a pretty good spot. So let's do that. Fetch with Evolving Wilds. Get an Island. And I think we cast Pirate's Prize over Mechanized Production here, since we're probably going to win with 5-5 uh, five, five beatdown from Tesseret tokens. Go to beginning of combat. Turn this into a 5-5. Five, five. Hit 
Hit for five. So let's see if they have some legendary dino action. Instead it's just a charging monstrosaur. Alright, that's actually better than a Regisaur Alpha here since that gets to Killer of Raska. But we're also just hitting our opponent for 10 next turn, so not too worried. Find a statuary. So we can run out the statuary. And then put a mechanized production on a treasure. Turn this treasure into a creature. And attack for five. So we've got a nice stream of treasure tokens turning into five fives. And we can reset the board should our opponent somehow manage to power out enough dinosaurs. Autopack Huntmaster, probably on chum block duty. And there's the Regisaur Alpha. Opponent's gonna get in for three here, and in our turn we should just be able to Pontus Last Reckoning and then turn an artifact into a 5-5 and attack for lethal. Make another 5-5. Search for Ascanta to draw. So let's sacrifice these for mana. Cast the Last Reckoning. And Tezzeret turns our treasure into a creature. And that does it sweet onto sideboarding against Naya dinosaurs. So don't think we want to change too much. Vizier of the Many Faces could be interesting as that can copy one of the opponent's powerful dinosaurs. I could see adding the Vizier but I think we're just gonna try without for now. This opening hand, however, is probably a mulligan, as we have six lands and a Tezzeret. This is better, so we'll keep. Blooming Marsh can probably stay on top, as we do want to hit a few land drops. So turn one, we can run out Blooming Marsh, representing Fatal Push. Does the opponent have a mana creature? They don't, instead Voltaic Brawl or Sir Opponent on the beatdown plan. Glad we kept in all our fatal pushes. So let's go ahead and play out Search. And we're probably gonna need to find some of our removal spells here other than the Contempt. Another Brawler, so if, if this goes to a game 3 we might have to consider those battle at the bridges, as they're pretty nice against this start from the opponents. Let's see what we reveal. Treasure map, that can go to the graveyard. Find a catacomb. So let's run out treasure map. And say go. There's a Huntmaster. Let's see if they both grow into 4-4s four here. It looks like they do. So we're already down to 8. Would not mind finding a Last Reckoning here. Spell Swindle can go to the bottom. We could scry on upkeep, but we're probably gonna cast the Vraska's Contempt. Swamp can go to the graveyard. And the draw step is another catacomb. 
All right, we'll pass and then contempt whatever brawler gets pumped or whatever giant dinosaur or opponent ramps into. Another energy means another brawler activation, so very relevant. Another Huntmaster. Both brawlers getting activated. Hoping our opponent doesn't have something like a blossoming defense. Alright, up to 10, then down to 6. Treasure map can go to the graveyard. And we'll find a fatal push. So that can take care of the brawler. And these hunt masters can definitely ramp out some scary cards. But we don't have much of a choice. Could have scried on upkeep, I suppose. Just to try and find something like a last reckoning. But we also kind of want to cast this Vraska next turn, so last reckoning would not let us do that. So we just have to survive this turn, and then I don't hate our chances. It's just a lightning strike to the face, probably followed by another lightning strike to the face. Nope, our opponent's gonna attack. And I'm surprised these hunt masters aren't getting in there. But uh, I guess we'll fatal push. End of turn will scry. Put that on the bottom. And I think we will upkeep scry once again after seeing what we find with search. So Bontus Last Reckoning is pretty awkward. Since we kind of want to draw it to deal with both hunt monsters to prevent any dino from getting haste. Since just running out Vraska might not be good enough. So I don't think we want to put that in the graveyard. We'll just draw. Now we could transform treasure map and then use a treasure to cast our Vraska, since I think we just want to make a 2-2 here, instead of minusing. So I think we transform treasure map, get an extra scry in, find a spell swindle. That could be good if we manage to stabilize here. So what if we just cast the last reckoning here? Then our opponent follows up with a big dino. We won't untap our swamp, nor the treasure cove. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work, so I think we just Vraska here. Use a treasure. And then make a pirate. Although our opponent could still give two different dinos haste and we would still be in trouble. But I think this gives us a best chance. Since if they don't have a big hasty dino, then the Last Reckoning plus Spell Swindle should give us some good protection. Opponent sending in both Hunt Masters at Frasca. And Harness Lightning takes care of our pirates. Alright, that's fine. I would rather have my opponent attacking Vraska than our life total. So Vraska to 6. Search for Ascanta is going to reveal that spell swindle, which we will not put in our graveyard. So here we could Reckoning and then make a pirate keep up spell swindle. That seems pretty appealing. So we'll do that. That way we don't have to be afraid of any hasty dinos. Nissa Vital Force is definitely getting spell swindled. Although now we won't be able to untap any of our lands. 
we should still be okay since we have these treasures to potentially cast a spell. So search for Ascanta. Reveals another Last Reckoning. I think we can put that in the graveyard. And then transform Ascanta. Find a Swamp. Which we will play out here, I think. And yeah, I guess we'll make another Pirate. And I think we leave our other Pirate on defense in case we need to double block a 3-3 Hasty Dino from... Regis or Alpha. And then we might be able to win a game with the Vraska ultimate here. Of course we're dead to a lightning strike. Instead, Kari Zev's expertise. Alright, that's scary. So that's definitely gonna knock Vraska down to 8. Making us unable to ultimate next turn. Instead, they're attacking us. Alright, not sure what to make of that. They could have a pump spell, so there's no need to use the Ascanta yet, I think. Since a Lightning Strike would kill us either way, I don't think our opponent has something like a Shock. So yeah, we're taking two, down to one. Opponent passes, we'll just untap. Draw, well, I think we're just ultimating Vraska. Opponent's life total becomes 1. Let's go to beginning of combat. Attack. Probably should have played our land in case we need to activate a Skanta and play a spell. Alright, did we get there? Alright, sweet. Vraska Ultimate. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.